Hello everyone and welcome to Scream Stream where every week I scour the web to separate the best from the worst of streaming horror so you don't have to. I'm James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is pick a horror film from one of the various streaming services and give it a spoiler free review and let you know if it's worth watching. Uh, there's a lot of horror films out there, so my goal is to make sure you're spending your time watching the good ones rather than having to sift through all the bad stuff. If you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can do so at ScreamPod.com, where you can find links to all of my social profiles, show notes for each episode, and some other cool stuff as well, and subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher. All the links are there in the side. You can also drop me a line with comments and suggestions, ScreamStreamCast at gmail.com, and I would also like to encourage you to go and join our Facebook uh, group where we talk about all things horror, and you can find that over at facebook.com slash groups slash ScreamPod. And lastly, I do want to let you know that ScreamStream is listener-supported, and if you would like to support the podcast and support me creating the show, head over to patreon.com slash ScreamStream, and you can sign up for a monthly donation. You'll get some extra perks, and it would help me out uh, paying for hosting and website costs and all that other good stuff. So if you enjoy the show and you want me to help it keep it going, uh, head over to patreon.com slash ScreamStream. Now let's get into the show. And this episode is going to be uh, shorter than the rest because I've almost hit my 50 megabyte quota for my Libsyn storage. And each episode is like 10.8 megabytes. And since next week is the uh, show just before Halloween, I kind of want to do some extra stuff. And it's going to be a longer show. So this one's going to have to get cut short. I do apologize. So for the review this week, I'm doing uh, Noroi, The Curse. And this is a Japanese uh, mockumentary found footage type of film. And this was directed by Koji Shireshi, and it stars Jin Miraki, Ryo Kano, Tomono Kuga, and uh, there's a few other names there that I'm not going to try to pronounce, because I don't want to butcher anybody's name. For a brief plot synopsis, a documentary filmmaker explores seemingly unrelated paranormal incidents connected by the legend of an ancient demon called The Kagutaba. Uh, Now, this film was actually made in 2005, and it was released in Europe and and, in Asian markets, but we did not get it here until 2015, thanks to AMC's horror uh, streaming horror service, Shudder. Now, you have heard me talk about Shudder a lot. I this is like my favorite streaming service because they have so. I mean, it's it's pure horror. Um, and they have old horror films, new horror films, um, B-rated horror, all kinds of stuff. And it's, it's one of my favorite services, and this is uh, exclusive to Shudder. Now, I didn't, I didn't know anything about this movie when I watched it. I didn't watch any trailers. I didn't read anything on it. So when I first turned it on, uh, I thought I was watching like an actual documentary. Which brings me to the acting. The acting was actually really good because I had no idea they were actually acting. Uh, now, there is one character in here uh, which kind of gave it away. And this was the character of uh, Mits- Mitsuo Hori. And he is sort of, he was like this super psychic guy. He kind of gave it away because. It just was too bizarre to be true. And then that's, at that point, I was like, I got to look this up to see if this is actually like a documentary or if this is a, a state or a scripted film. And it was a scripted film. Everybody else was like spot on. Like they seemed like normal people. Um, and uh, Muraki, uh, Jin Muraki uh, played, no, I'm sorry. Marika Matsumoto, she played herself. Now, I have actually seen her in a couple of other things now that I I looked at her IMDb page. Uh, She was in uh, Reincarnation, 
which was part of one of the uh, eight films to what was it eight eight horror films to scare you to death or something like that. And they do they do these every year, the series every year. Um, and she's also in a bunch of video games. I've seen her in a couple other horror films too. So now that I looked at our IMDb page, I, I did recognize her, and she's the only person that I did recognize. So, acting great, uh, and as far as like like the story goes, uh, and and the film in general, it was a pretty interesting story. Uh, we start off with this guy who's just investigating some paranormal incidences, and things start to get linked together. And you kind of follow him on this investigative journey. And all the pieces start to fall nicely in place. Uh, there were a, like a couple like tense moments. And there were some definitely, definitely like some, some real creepy uh, moments that happened between char- just character interactions. Uh, nothing paranormal that happened. Just, just between like conversations there, there was some, some real tension build up there. Now, one of the problems that I did have with the film was its use of CGI. There were a couple of scenes where I wa- I looked at it and like, you know, that that's pretty bad. And this is after I already looked it up to see if it was it was fake or not. But if I hadn't, the CGI would have given it away. It it was really bad. And I think Japan used to. I don't know if they still do, but they used to have a limit on types of CGI they can use and how much of it they can use, which is why they do a lot of things practically. Uh, and I, I guess since this was 2005, they didn't ha- really have the technology to make it look extremely believable because, I mean, it looked kind of cartoony. And that's really my only gripe I had with the film uh, other than that, it wasn't really scary, um, but it, it did have like a really cool, interesting storyline to it. Uh, even though it wasn't scary, uh, it was creepy, uh, and there were some tense moments. Uh, now, the end, the end kind of reminded me of how found footage films are typically wrapped up, and. I don't. I can't really say anything because I'll just give it all away. But like the very end is your like explanation shot or explanation scene where everything gets explained and the mystery is kind of wrapped up. Uh, but they did it in a good way. It, it wasn't bad or it wasn't poorly written or anything like that. And it was you know just your standard way of of wrapping up um, a found footage film. And, it, and you can definitely tell. Koji uh, Shire- Shireshi uh, studied a lot of American found footage. Um, now, at this time in 2005, there wasn't a whole lot, uh, but there were some good ones out there. And you can tell that he really studied um, American found footage, uh, especially with that ending. And uh, I think he did a good job. It, this was the first time that i've seen asian found footage and i think it was it was good it's well worth a watch so if you don't have shutter um you know you can get the the seven day free trial i don't have a promo code because shutter does not sponsor me i just really like the service so if you don't have it get your seven day free trial and check this film out Uh, it is worth it and again it is called neroi the curse i do recommend it yeah really good film all right, so I'm cutting out the news this week. There were a couple of things I did want to talk about, but because I'm kind of pressed for, for time and space with this episode, I'm going to skip the news and get right to what's new to stream. Now, on Netflix, we have a few things. Uh, the Babysitter, which is a Netflix original movie. This is sort of like a horror comedy. Uh, babysitter comes to babysit the kid, and weird things start to happen. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. It looks good can't wait to watch it uh slasher season one and two of slasher now this was a it's an anthology series but in the sense of american horror story so a there's a story per season so season one was was called um the executioner season two is called guilty party now season one was actually done for chiller tv 
It was an original series for children TV. And then for season two, Netflix got the rights for it. And so now it is a Netflix exclusive. Uh, 1922 is now on Netflix. Uh, this is the film adaptation of Stephen King's novella, 1922. I haven't, I, I watched a very brief trailer for it. So I have, I don't really know a whole lot. I don't want to watch any trailers, but I, I, I've heard it's good. And then for Shudder, uh, all the Universal Classics are now there. So we have Dracula, uh, The Invisible Man, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, and The Wolfman are now on, sh- on Shudder. Uh, I have actually... This is going to sound terrible. I never actually watched any of those films uh, until this weekend. Friday... Yeah, between Friday and, and today, today is Sunday... Uh, I watched all of those films. I wish I had watched them sooner. I'm going to talk about them a lot more on ne- next week's uh, Halloween special. And then we also have Escape from Tomorrow. This is an interesting film. It's shot in black and white. Uh, this guy actually <laughs> went to Disney World. or Was it Disney World or Disneyland? Maybe it was Disneyland in California. Had no permission to shoot there, but he shot an entire horror film there. It, it's, it came out a few years ago, and I think I might actually do a review of this one on the show. Uh, and then we have Hell House LLC. This is another found footage film. Uh, and this is about a, uh, a group who goes around the country, and each year they, they set up a haunted house in a different uh, city uh, within the state, I think. Um, and this one... Something tragically happens, and this is that story. Uh, A decent film. I'd recommend checking it out. Uh, Chat Room is now on Shudder. Never heard of it. It looks kind of cheesy. I don't know if I'm going to watch it or not. Uh, And then another film called Vanishing Waves. I have no idea what it's about. Um, It also looks a little cheesy. Uh, So there is your new to stream. And again, you know, I don't know if you want me to list, like... Uh, brand new rentals to like Amazon because uh, right now I'm just doing uh, films that you don't have to pay extra for other than the uh, the service fee. For example, you know, the the uh, Amazon Prime fee or the fee for Netflix or whatever. Uh, but if you do want me to do new rentals that come out, let me know. Uh, again, head over to screenpod.com and uh, you can either send me an email or hit that contact form. Uh, and let me know. And that's going to wrap up this episode. Again, I apologize it's so short, uh, but I am hit, I'm about to hit that 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 50 megabyte cap. And next week is is the Halloween episode. I want to do some extra stuff. I'm going to talk about all of the Universal horror um, classics. If you haven't seen them, if you're like me and you haven't seen them, which Shame on us, because we should have already watched those. (laughs) We should have watched them a long time ago. Go ahead and watch them, because uh, since they are so old, I'm just going to do spoilers uh, left and right, because I do want to talk about all of those films and their significance to the horror genre. And then I'm also going to talk about some um, Halloween specials I remember when I was a kid. I'm going to do a lot of cool stuff next week, so I I need the space. So, as always, ScreamStream is listener-supported, and you can support the show at patreon.com slash ScreamStream. I do want you to know how important your support is, whether it's financial support through Patreon or just sharing it with your friends and family. You encourage me to keep this show going, and I greatly appreciate that. Uh, If you have a movie you'd like me to review, send me your suggestion to ScreamStreamCast at gmail.com or go to ScreamPod.com slash contact uh, and fill out the little form. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher. I keep saying iTunes. It's now Apple Podcasts. In Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, TuneIn Radio. And we're also on uh, a few other uh, services. So whatever your favorite podcatcher is, subscribe to the show. And music used for ScreamStream was created by Kevin McLeod. And you can find him and his music over at Incompotech.com. And until next week, I'm James Gass saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night.